This week, we're changing from Matthew. We're going over to the book of Psalms for one, one week. We'll be back next week in Matthew. I'd like to give you a little history of our country. When we look at our very young country concerning Thanksgiving, it all started with the pilgrims who came in the 1600s. They rebelled against King George of England because of religious persecution. They wanted freedom to worship and to give thanks to God for all he had done and was doing in their lives. Later on, our forefathers set aside the fourth Thursday in November, a day of thanksgiving to thank God for freedom, provision, safety, and the freedom to pray without fear of punishment. They wanted to sing praises and give thanks to a holy and merciful and gracious God for all he had done. Yes, Thanksgiving was the time after the crops were brought into the storehouses to provide for the winter ahead. Some of the crops were sold at the marketplace so the people would have enough money to get through winter until spring when seeds and fertilizer were bought, planted for the year ahead. Now, when I was a young boy, I was raised on a farm. As I look back, we all had jobs to do to provide for our family. Farmers would help other families bring in the fruits of their labor. As I grew up, things began to change. Big farms would lease or buy small farms. People were finding jobs in other areas of business, and it wasn't long before machinery took over the jobs people used to do. Farming went on, of course, but the work was done by big companies. High tech and big machinery was on the way. But each November, we would all still get our families together and give thanks to God for all He had done in our lives. And never has one day a year been enough to thank God. And it was then, as it is today, we should give thanks to God each and every day. Thanksgiving should be on our lips, thanking God for His love, His mercy, His free gift of grace to all who would believe on His name. We are to give joyfully our time, our talents, and our treasure to honor, love, and obey a holy and faithful, loving God. Yes, and to help our fellow man in need. I'd like to read to you today Psalms 100. It is one of the many psalms of praise and thanksgiving that are found throughout the Bible. The theme of Psalm 100 is an invitation to enter joyfully into God's presence. God's faithfulness extends to our generation. Yes, and to the generations beyond. Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us. Yes, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. And give thanks to Him and praise His name. For the Lord is good, and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. If you'd bow your heads with me and let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we enter in your gates of thanksgiving and to your courts with praise, our hearts are overjoyed with being in your presence. Your love for us is so overflowing that it calms our hearts and minds and to the most wonderful and joyous peace that we have ever known. Father, we look forward to the day we can see you and dwell in your house forever. Your promises give us hope and strength. For not one promise has failed, not one. All praise and glory be yours both now and forever. Humbly we pray in Jesus' name. The journey continues next week in the book of Matthew. Remember to give thanks and to keep the faith. God bless.